Hello, my name is Matias Piñeiro. I'm the director of Tu Me Abrazas, You Burn Me, a film that we just finished and it's showing at the Encounter section here in Berlinale. We're very happy to be back after a couple of years to, to celebrate the festival and the work of uh, Carlo Chatrian in the direction. Tu me abrazas. Tu me abrazas. Tu me abrazas. Tú me abrazas. Hello and welcome to the 38th Teddy Award. My name is Jan Felix Wuttig and today I'm here with director Matthias Pinheiro to talk about his film You Burn Me. Matthias, glad to have you here. Oh, thank you for making it. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. I'm very happy to be. And uh, thank you as well for You Burn Me. It's an incredibly rich and complex film. Uh, you employ the writings of Cesare Pavese yeah. and the poems of Sappho um, for, I would say, a sort of meditation on love, death, the nature of desire. Yeah. But at the same time, you sort of construct um, a language mm. through images. Yeah. Um, could you maybe tell us how the idea for the film came to you? Yeah. So, uh, there, were, there were two moments. One was when I read the book, uh, Dialogues with Leuco by Chester de Pavese, that it was a hard text. Mm -hmm. It was not easy. Yes. It was not that I was fully attracted. It was a, a text that demanded me, like I left it behind, then I picked it up again, yeah, yeah. and then it, I was like struggling a little bit. The, 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 the text resisted a yeah. little bit, my, my, my fluid reading. But all of a sudden, I came across Seafoam, the chapter the, in the, that is a conversation between Sappho and Britomart, a mm -hmm. nymph from the sea. Um, and uh, I was immediately attracted to that. Mm -hmm. It was, I think, the only one where two women were talking. Mm -hmm. And there was some, and, and also Sappho, a, a historical figure, not a mythological one. And that, uh, that conversation, this, as you mentioned, this idea of desire and death, and this dialogue, this sort of com conceptual conversation, it was not dramatic, no? It's mm -hmm. more talking about certain ideas. I felt that I could do something with it. Mm -hmm. um, and from sharing this text that is like eight pages or seven pages long, with one of the actresses that I used to work with, Agustina Muñoz, mm -hmm. that appears as a voice in the end oh, yeah. of the film, in, uh, uh, in the end she appeared only as a voice, okay. like the narrator in a yeah. way, uh, she recommended me to read Anne Carson's translation on Sappho's poetry. And that's where I started like reading Sappho and becoming very interested and thinking, because when I first read the, the text of Pavese, I said, I don't know how I will shoot this. Mm -hmm. And that was the challenging and interesting thing that like kind of magnetized me yes, to yeah. it. And then through Sappho, I said, I think that maybe it's through Sappho that I will be able to like permeate and like expand yes. and and somehow somehow like live inside of this text. Yes. No, I think that Sappho helped me through that. Uh, and the very first idea, because in the beginning I said, I have no idea how to shoot this text of Pavese. I don't know, I cannot do it as I did my previous films that I worked with the female roles in Shakespeare's mm -hmm. comedies. I could not do the panning and the long shots and so on and the rehearsal. It was not that. And I've been doing that for more than 10 years. So I was, yeah, yeah. my muscles were very used to yeah, certain yeah. choreography. Yeah, yeah. And this was completely different, which was also the other thing that I was very magnetized to. Mm -hmm. And the first idea to actually push me to shoot was a kind of a little bit of an inside joke of saying, I would like my film to be useful. Okay. I would like understanding the nature of 
how we received the poem, the poetry of Sappho, this fragmented nature, mm -hmm. you know, on the verge of disappearance, maybe this film will be an opportunity to make each audience member uh, an, uh, a living archive of her poetry. Uh, oh. you know, I, yeah. I will create this little mnemotechnic game, mm -hmm. it's a little bit funny, in order to make the audience learn by heart the poetry of Savo. Yeah. So when they yeah. go out of this movie, they take something with yeah. them. And yeah. so the, the poetry of Savo is internalized by the yeah. audience, and they leave the, the cinema with, with that with them. Yeah. So it was kind of a joke, but then I started being interested in this association between words and images. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that I started shooting, understanding that the Pavese text was still like hard for me to get to, yeah. I said, let's start collecting, accumulating these shots that I will then uh, associate with the poems. Yeah. My first idea would be, let's take a poem with three words, for instance, the title of the movie, mm -hmm. You Burn Me, yeah. and I put a shot of a flower, and I said, you. I put a shot of the train and say, burn, and then I put a shot of a pie, that is me. Yeah. And if I repeat those three images, images that have to be very different from each other, mm -hmm. uh, so as not to get confused, if I repeat that in a sort of gentle drilling way, yeah. uh, and then all of a sudden I put the flower, I put the train, and I put the pie, the poem is inside of you. Yeah. So yeah. I study accumulating these images. Yeah. I have to do them. I have to understand the nature of these images. So that's how it started. And then the, the, the second, the third moment was when I said, I want to adapt this text, the entirety of this text, in comparison to what I did with Shakespeare, that I was just taking one, two lines, or one scene, or a couple of scenes mm -hmm. in regard to the female role. Uh, I said, I want to, to shoot the complete text of Pavese, of the chapter. It's not that long, but I wanted it to be complete. Yeah, yeah. But I'm also interested in how can cinema, uh, in this idea of expanding the text, how can cinema relate to the idea of the footnote? The okay. way of expanding would be the footnotes. Yes. So when they say Calypso, mm -hmm. I don't know who Calypso is. Okay. When I read the book, they, there's a footnote that tells me a little bit about Calypso. Yeah, I'm very yeah, attracted yeah. to the now Calypso. And then when I go back to the text, the, 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 the text blooms differently. Yes. No? Sure. And so I said, how can I do that in cinema? How can cinema relate to footnotes? Mm -hmm. And I thought this idea of detours. And I thought, ah, maybe the idea of the mnemotechnic game is one of these detours. And so that's how I started. It was a very a process of thinking, writing, shooting, editing, thinking, yeah, writing, yeah, yeah. constantly, you know? Yeah. So it was that machine that then ended up creating this kind of layered network mm -hmm. of text and ideas and so on. Yes. I, I was about to say that uh, what really the first thing I really loved about the film was that you have different phases in which image and text are sort of constructed differently. Mm -hmm. For example, um, in the scenes where you talk about uh, Pavese's suicide, yeah. you have an almost documentarian feel to it, you know, yeah. because uh, dialogue or, or text and image fit in a way that we are used to, mm. I guess. And then in other times you have, you know, a whole new combination yeah. of text and image. Um, there's also this figure of the biology student yeah. getting locked out of her home, <laughs> which is um, by, by the sort of high intellectual standard of, of the whole film is a, a very manifest yeah. sort of image. Yeah. How did you come up with that? It first appeared as uh, also a little bit of a wicked game of, okay, I'm working with poetry all of a sudden, and I was not expecting to be doing <laughs> that in my life. And I said, oh, let's, let's do something absolutely absurd, that is adapt a poem. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? And what an absurd challenge, you know, because it's impossible. There's no point even. It's like yeah. senseless to do it. But let's do it. And let's have different entries to it again. As you just said, this idea, the, the little Torino segment that gets mm -hmm. repeated with different little variations and yeah. with a different yeah. text and different little variations. I like that. I like the idea of variation. I like the idea that nothing gets exhausted just by experiencing it once. 
I think that I need to have a multi-layer understanding of things, of conflicts, of gestures. Uh, like a hand can be this, but it can be that. No, the sea can be death, but it can be life. Yes. And this is where the bacteria element appeared. No, the biologist appeared. The idea of, uh, in the text, Sappho and Britomat die by falling from a cliff to the yeah. sea. So the ocean, this immensity, is death somehow. But, but I don't know, in our history, it's also uh, a symbol of fertility. Mm -hmm of Venus, no, yeah. of Aphrodite coming out. It's about, uh, I don't know, like semen yeah. also. Yeah. Uh, it's this foam, sea foam. Actually, Pavese mentions that in his prefaces that he, that he has in the book. And, um, and I thought that, okay, let's, let's add other, another layer by, by, in this idea of the footnote, the idea of the adaptation of the poem. Mm -hmm. Maybe a way of adapting a poem is with another poem from another uh, poet, from, from Alfonsina Storni, that is yeah. an Argentine uh, poet. So there's one poem by Sappho that it's um, I long and then I seek for, uh, that, I, that when I read another poem by Alfonsina Storni, this Argentine uh, poet, it really reminded me of that for me, because the Sappho poems are fragmented and on its nature, you wouldn't be able to fully pinpoint the meaning of yeah, it. Yeah. You cannot, you, you, you might appropriate them, you might take them and you might make them your own and you might understand them, they might trigger something in you, uh, but you won't have the whole control of it. You don't yeah. have the full meaning of it. And especially because you don't fully have it in full because they're all fragments. Yeah, but yeah. that instead of being a limitation is a, a, an accelerator of sensitivity for me. Yeah. No, it, it pushes us to think more openly and to expand it. True. So one of these expansions was the idea of the, um, uh, of the adaptations. And OK, in a movie that is very con a little bit conceptual, a little bit of an essay, I need a little bit of body. I need a little bit of drama. I yeah. need a little bit of narrative. Yeah. And let's do it. And yeah. so the character of the, of the biologist, of the student of biology, connected me with the conceptual issues of, the, of science a little bit, of the bacteria that I wanted to include and gave me the possibility of like drafting a few sketches of narrative. Yeah. No? Yeah. Where in the end, in this process of writing, shooting and editing, we were polishing here and there. And I just wanted not to have a plot, but like hints of a plot, a hint of a story. Mm -hmm. Also in regard to, I think that if we're dealing with Sappho and its idea of fragmentation and how fragmentation is it's a it's an acceleration of imagination in a way i shouldn't be f providing a full story yeah yeah i should i should avoid that but how can i do it without making it fakely fragmented okay yeah, no yeah. how how can i do it now and i think that the process of shooting and editing it, it already created like a bumpy road mm -hmm. Uh, it was not uh, tidy. It yeah, was not a yeah. tidy <laughs> way of working, yeah, you know? Yeah. And that already gave, for instance, there was a time, one of the ideas that I tried and I cut out from the movie, um, I used some 16 millimeter from my very first film. It's in black and white. There's one shot mm -hmm. that is there of the, uh, of the main part of Brito Mart, Maria Bichard, uh -huh. like growing an apple that it's painted. Oh, yeah. It's a yeah. very, yeah. 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 but I have more of that. And, what I, and I had the outtakes of that movie from 2007, mm -hmm. <laughs> The Stolen Man, with the same actress, with Maria in 2006, and Maria now, 2023. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to put those things together, of course, because yeah. this is also about friendship. This movie is about friendship and the bonds and the family that we create that is not biological, yeah. that is the, fam yeah. the film family that we create. Um, and so I wanted to do that. And I had the outtakes and I said, oh, maybe I can bleach. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can paint, I can, I can intervene these 60 millimeter outtakes that I have, the concrete ones. Yeah. And, I, and this idea of fragment, of decay, that, uh, but then I felt that the gesture was fake. Mm -hmm. Me putting bleach to the thing is not the same what happened to Sappho. Yeah, okay. You it's, know, it's a, Sappho a... was not bleaching her poems. <laughs> uh, so in that sense, I say, ah, this is a fake path. Yeah. This is a fake path. The, uh, so I prefer to le leave it behind. It was interesting. I, I, it was very interesting for me. But, but then in, in the narrative that somehow I was creating, I was not able to achieve the whole thing that I wanted to achieve. So mm -hmm. it ended up being like more natural yeah, more uh, concretely fragmented, mm -hmm. you know? Because I was shooting, in, for instance, I was shooting in San Sebastián with Maria Inés González, that is the, the, the student, and in Athens. 
Yeah. No? So why is it that she's in both places? And actually, you don't recognize much of San Sebastian, for instance. You don't, mm. but, so they merge, but they don't fully click. Yeah. Because we did it in different moments, and I'm not someone that is trying to do like con perfect continuity, or I was very free, and I was very, not, not free, um, loose mm. with not trying to put every knot together. Okay. You yeah. know? So yeah. naturally, in the process, I knew that it was going to be left with... Uh, some rough edges. Yeah. The making was rough because yeah. this was a movie that I made uh, with the help of the film school in San Sebastian, Elias Cerejeta Cinescola, and with a group of people that I work with. I was learning how to use the camera, the mistakes that are in the camera and so on. They're not mistakes that I did on purpose. It, like the You Burn Me, mm -hmm. the, the, the first the, image that is the building in New York that does like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. I was not happy when I was listening, when I was shooting that. Mm -hmm. And listening that the camera was doing like a crazy noise, yeah. I said, oh my God, this is a problem. I was not creating that on purpose. But then when we watch it, the editor, yeah. Gerard Borras, that imagined in this movie there is a mosaic of shot, the editor is fundamental. Um, we, 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 ah, okay, this that I was going to throw out, yeah. these mistakes that I was going to throw out, the editor was wise enough, sensitive enough to, to understand that, no, no, this is part of the process. Yeah. This yeah. movie is also a documentary about how you learn to use this camera, Matthias. Yeah. 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 You know? So I didn't need to fake it. I, needed, yeah. I didn't need to do the as if, you know? Uh, do as if uh, you made a mistake. Do as if, no, uh, let's, okay. let's do this. And as we are humans, we're yeah. going to make mistakes. Yeah, make mistakes so as not to curse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was about to ask this because many images feel like they have a lot of thought yeah. behind them. And then others feel more, well, not improvised, yeah. but they are, they have a sort of light feeling to yeah. them, you know? Like you would choose them on a whim, so yeah. to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that gives the film a very sort of um, a very lucid feel. So yeah. it's, it's, it's very, very good to follow that. Yeah. Um, you are also working at the moment, I hear about uh, on an adaptation on a Henry James yes. novel. Yeah. Um, did you take anything from You Burn Me that you are now employing on your new film? Um, I'm sure I will. Now, I wouldn't be able to say, but the movies are cycles. They give the, I don't think that they are cuts. You know, even if I stop the, the Shakespeare series that I was doing, mm -hmm. of course there are connections with, the, with You Burn Me. And, and the Henry James is an idea that I have been having for a long time. I developed the script uh, that I need to keep on working. And in that sense, I'll be more conventional, but I know that the convention, I can't. There's yeah. something that I kind of can't, and I need to, 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 to puncture it. I need to, yeah, yeah, to, yeah, to, yeah. to crook it, to, to, to shift it, to move it from the center. Mm -hmm. You know, I need to, to be in a crooked line. Yeah. Uh, so I'm sure that it's going to get some sort of, a, some sort of um, interference with the, with the with the experience of You Burn Me. Yeah. So, so Harry James comes before, and so You Burn Me came like a, a thunder in a way, <laughs> and I think that that will inevitably change the, 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 you, uh, the, 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 the project of Henry James of the Lesson of the Master. Yeah, yeah. At first I know one thing. Uh, in the Lesson of the Master, uh, there's a writer, the main character is a writer, and, and, and she's writing something. And I'm, I'm changing the, the, the writer to actress. I'm changing all, I'm, uh, and so the actress will be performing something, and that something is sea foam, ah, that's okay. of public. So yeah, already yeah. in a very concrete way. Yeah. But I think that the, 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 the intertwining is not only that. I think that there is something about the fluidity, mm -hmm. something of what you're mentioning, that will impact. Because yeah, this yeah. is not something this is something that we've been breathing in and out. Yeah. And so it's not that now I can put the, the helmet <laughs> of the narrative <laughs> filmmaker yeah, and the yeah. helmet of the experiment. I, I feel that I'm a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I have a tendency to narrative, to a sort of alternative way of telling things that is clear maybe in the previous work. And in here, all of a sudden, I'm with this sort of film that when I was trying to describe it in terms of genre, 
<laughs> it's not easy to do, yes. <laughs> so I say, what well, is a fiction essay? It's an yeah. essay fiction. Yeah. Uh, because it has elements of essays, as you said, these documentary elements, that it's the, the, the sort of travelogue, if you want, like in the mm -hmm. Torino, but also the little animals on the beach. And yeah. there's yeah. a moment where I'm capturing gestures of the landscape in a way, or, or objects, or the mnemotechnic game. What is that? Yeah. <laughs> like, what is the mnemotechnic game? It's not a dramatic plot point, yeah. you know? Uh, but at the same time, they're actors. There's the text. The text is a dialogue. Yeah, it's yeah. like theater in a way. And it's Maria Baixar and, uh, and Gabi Saidon performing, yeah. but also performing in a level of intimacy that I think that, that touches what you just mentioned in regard to how certain images seem so like, like it's not improvised, but, but caught because the, I shot this movie with Tomas Paula Marquez, another friend, mm -hmm. uh, that she helped me with the cinematography of, uh, uh, of the film. And, and she was the one that somehow pushed me to grab the bollocks, to take the bollocks. Mm -hmm. Um, and the bollocks gives an intimacy and a time that is much more slow, mm -hmm. uh, or at least I was slow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that created the possibility of making decisions, strangely enough, more quickly, like, okay, we're here. I, was, I thought that I was going to sh make a shot of you like, like this here, yeah. but then all of a sudden there's some light there that it's nice, and this camera here, and maybe it's nice to do. So we could do quickly. We didn't need to move yeah. all a yeah. group of people. Yeah. I never work with a huge crew, but still I work with a crew with, uh, but here was, no, like before, no? Now it was like two people, three yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. So it was very easy. And also it didn't have di direct sound. I knew from the beginning. That, so that also freed like the image to, if you were here, I could like all of a sudden do like this. Yeah, yeah. You know? and, and all of a sudden uh, grab something. I don't know, in the movie there are many moments where I just like, vroom, pan, like yeah. that. <laughs> wanting to somehow get like a grasp of air or, yeah. um, so it gave me that, Flexibility that I hope that it's not only because I'm making a movie uh, with three people yeah. <laughs> or four people, but that I can take that into a structure that is like larger, that mm -hmm. like the one that the Henry James would require. Yeah. So yeah. in that sense, I hope that it keeps on merging more like yeah. bacteria, yeah. 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 No? that they keep on <laughs> mixing and uniting and fusing and so on. Yeah. I believe and I hope I wouldn't be able to say it now. Uh, what what it is, yeah, of course. but I hope you we will learn soon. <laughs> I hope so too. Yeah. yeah, that it will sort of drip in your next film like yeah. like sea foam. So yeah, to speak. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Matthias, thank you so much. No, thank for you for taking the time. No, I'm very excellent. glad that you could make it. No, please. And uh, I wish you all the best for the Berlinale and yeah. for the premiere. It's oh, it's a Wednesday, 21st Wednesday. of February at noon in the okay. Academie der Kunst. Yeah. So I'm sure people will love it. I yeah. hope. I hope that they enjoy it and they yeah. enter into the dialogue. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm.